Right, Coach Trevor, we're going to start with an opening statement, and then we'll take questions. Just raise your hand and get the microphone over to you. JJ, am I getting older? Those stairs getting steeper. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, first half's a little frustrating. Uh, Ross is just scrappy, much overachievers. And, you know, and, and Mike's done a really good job. We outplayed them, but the score didn't really show, you know, 10 to 7. Uh, but we've been through that a little bit this year. Uh, so we were not, uh, you know, flustered at halftime. I just told them, you know, that execution always outlasts momentum. And we just got to keep executing, and we'll be fine. And we did. And um, I hate it for Mike because I've been there before. I know what it's like when you lose your quarterback and you, you got to play your backup. I thought Padgett did a really good job. They had a good plan. Uh, but obviously that gave us an advantage. And you always hate to see that in football uh, with injuries and stuff. So I felt bad for Mike on that aspect. A total team win for us, though. Our defense was dominant. Our offense was really good. We just didn't score in the red zone down there a couple times early. Had a turnover. And special teams was fantastic. We thought Army was as good as special team Army. We thought Rice was as good as Army on special teams. And we really challenged our kids all week uh, about that Army game and how similar these two teams were. And uh, our kids met the challenge. I thought Chris Carpenter's punt return and the guys did a great job with that. And great pooch kick by you know Lucas and uh, a big time field goal you know by Tate. Really glad to get Tate back up there and do that because you know he missed that one against Houston. Jeff, the Roadrunners have now won six games in a row. How, is there a way you could explain this streak and how you got here after that that start? Yeah, I just told Andy the same thing. You know, we've, we've been on an unbelievable run the last four years, and we all need to understand how hard that is to do and not take this stuff for granted. And uh, I pray we don't get spoiled here. Uh, I can sense a little bit of that already. Uh, and that's unfortunate because these kids deserve you know, people would be grateful and appreciative, and most people are. I'm not there saying it's not, but I've been there and done that before, and uh, it's just hard to do. And I'm really proud of our kids, especially when you go through what they did in September, uh, to be written off the way they were. And uh, we've got momentum back right now. Uh, we're, we're somewhat healthy, and uh, you know, Frank Harris is playing his last game here Friday, uh, unless something crazy happens. And uh, I really hope everybody shows up to watch that. That's and he's got, we got a bunch of other seniors too, but you know, just that kid and his competitive spirits, unlike many I've ever coached in my career. Jeff, is uh, you have an update on Willie McCoy? Is he okay? We do. Uh, that one scared me. Uh, Andy just brought it up that I was the first one on the field. I know that's probably, I'm probably in trouble for that. I, but I could tell by the hit he was going to be down. That kid's come so far, and I'm really proud of him. And those hurt. I was really excited, though, just being out there with him. Uh, I am smart enough to know when I got out there and I could touch him. I just wanted to make sure he knew I was there. And uh, he's in pain, but everything was good. I mean, like, he had strength, you know, no tingling down the legs, all those things you check for. They just were very careful and uh, really grateful for the medical attention that he got immediately and the information we got very soon. So, uh, good kid. Praying for you, Brother Willie. Jeff, you mentioned the run you guys have been on through the last few years, not just this season, and it's the third straight year where a conference season is opening with a pretty long win streak. How do you compare this experience to the previous years? Um, probably the most enjoyable of all of them. Uh, the first year, I would say that was pretty fun just because nobody thought we were going to do anything. But you guys, our expectations of us are so high, and they should be. We've got a good football team. It's not unrealistic. Uh, but just so much negativity in September. And uh, to watch my kids never, ever flinch. I mean, I told you at halftime at right, Tennessee, I mean, they just didn't flinch. So I knew we were going to be fine. And I told everybody we were going to be fine. But, so I, I got a lot of uh, proud old man in me for my kids not listening to the noise and just trusting the process and winning the freaking day. I mean, I know y'all get tired of hearing it, but there was, uh, was a magic pill, everybody take it. It's just, it's work, it's a grind. And our kids, they just do it. They're, they're the best. Do you guys have a sense of kind of closing in on a goal as you pursue another conference championship, or what's it like as you go through this week to week now? Come on, man. You know better than that. We play South Florida next week. That's the goal, South Florida. That's all we'll talk about all week. But I got you guys talking about that other stuff. That's why y'all are out there. Y'all are the best at that.
Coach, you guys outscored them 21 to nothing in the third quarter to really break the game open. What changed in that quarter from the first two? Well, we were dominant on defense. I'm mad at myself. I, I was so not confident right before halftime. I wanted to stay in a rhythm. Uh -huh. So I let Frank, you know, throw that ball with 55 seconds left. I should have milled some more of that time off, but our defense is being so dominant that I just didn't think that was smart because our offense was struggling so much. I didn't want to go up six another half halftime. I wanted to get to 10. And uh, so I'm beating myself up for that. Um, but I thought, uh, excuse me, I thought coming out the second half and three and out immediately, uh, and the offense going down immediately and scoring a touchdown, I thought that was big. And then obviously the punt return dominoed that. And uh, our defense was just dominant the whole night. But let's be honest, they, our threes or our fours gave up a touchdown against their ones, and we gave up a, a 35 second drive. It seemed like it was 35 seconds, it probably was less, right before halftime. And other than that, they were dominant. But again, I, I feel bad for mine. Uh, just nothing against the backup quarterback. It's just, it's just that's unfortunate with, with, with football that quarterbacks are so. That is something I wish college would look into is protecting quarterbacks like we do in the National Football League. It just makes such a difference when those kids go down. And I, I think that's something that should be looked at and studied about what can we do to keep quarterbacks healthy. Jeff, how did you feel about the offense in the first half? You guys had 250 yards, but only came away with 10 points. Yeah, just like that. I mean, frustrated, you know, because we had played so well. But, and, I, and I've done this so long. There's nothing worse than when you play a game and you play really well, but there's no results for it. And it's a strange game like that. It's strange. And uh, so I also have a lot of faith in my team, and we've been here so many times together that I didn't – we don't panic. Uh, we just – like I said earlier in the – we started this press conference, I just really believe execution outlasts emotion and momentum. And they had the momentum, they had the emotion, uh, and I thought we would out-execute them the second half, and, and our kids did. Chris Carpenter had the punt return touchdown. He had fumbled one before that and fumbled one last week. Did you ever think about going away from him, and what did it mean to see him deliver the way he did? Well, the guy you're going to go away to him with is in the hospital, so that would have been tough to do. Uh, so that, I wouldn't have pulled him anyway. Never thought about it. I don't roll that way. Never have rolled that way. That's the hardest thing in, in sports, other than hitting a golf ball or a curveball. I mean, it's hard. And Chris is really good at it, so never thought about pulling him. Did it make it more rewarding to see him score? Because it does. I agree with that. Uh, just because all I ever tell those kids is, is make the next play. It, I, you think Oscar didn't fumble it on purpose. Chris didn't drop it on purpose. I mean, you know, it's just – it is what it is, man. Make the next play. I wouldn't put them back there if I didn't believe in them. Jeff, what, what do you think has been the key to the defense playing so well during this winning streak? It seems like they've been able to maybe turn the page in some early season struggles. Uh, getting some kids back health-wise, health I mean, that always makes us better. And uh, we're somewhat healthy, you know. We've lost a few kids, but not a ton. And, Tonight was a big night, it was a short turnaround, and we got some kids out of the game pretty quick. So, you know, tomorrow is Monday, even though it's Sunday for y'all. And so the rest of the week is just that way. So uh, we'll, we'll bring those kids in and, you know, we won't watch the video with them because we've got to get on to South Florida as a staff. So we'll, it'll be early in the morning. A lot of, there won't be anything left. I, like I, I told my staff, like, I got to sleep in, you know, Friday morning a little bit because we were at home. And, no more of that, man. It's just it's going to be a straight burn for the next two weeks. Jeff, what's the status of Kavorian Barnes going forward? Uh, he could have played today. Uh, we just wanted to be smart with him. Uh, so we've got two other backs, kind of like we did with Rocco. When he wasn't quite right, we just gave him the week off. That's the beautiful thing about having three backs. But I thought Cage ran well tonight, as did be high. And we did a really good job of uh, keeping a lot of our freshmen from playing a lot. So we've got four games to play with them. So that's exciting because we've got a lot of red shirts and got some guys that are pretty healthy. And we're getting deeper at a time of year where some people are getting thinner. And as long as we can stay healthy, we got a shot. Was there something about this matchup or just what was working for you guys that led you to lean more on the run than the pass in this game? Um, I, I would say just the success of how we were doing it, you know, just tended to make us go back to it. 
and uh, it's not like we didn't throw it. I, mean, I think at halftime we threw it 20 times. So times two, that's 40. That's too many throws for me personally. Um, but it was just working. Coach, uh, 14 sacks on the season for Trey Moore. Can you just tell me about how much of an asset that is, especially as you get to the end of the stretch here when you're playing t uh, teams like Tulane, potentially SMU. Can you just speak on how much of a force he is and how that will contribute to your team going forward? Yeah, first, let's make sure all of our NIL contributors uh, look up 210inspired.org, 210 City fans, uh, Runners Rising. Let's make sure our own San Antonio kids don't get picked. It's fixing to be open season on our roster. It's first. Second, if he goes to the National Football League, more power to him. We'll get him a good grade on that. Third, in the moment, we've got him, right? So uh, he's a blessing, man. What an amazing kid. It couldn't happen to a better human. Smithson Valley legacy. I know Larry Hill's so proud. I, who couldn't be? I mean, the kid is just different. And uh, he wears that single digit with pride. He loves San Antonio like Frank. Uh, and uh, we're very fortunate he chose to stay with us last time. All, everybody on this roster that's really good stayed for a, a quarter on the dollar. So they love their city. Uh, they do love the money that our collectives do for them and our NIL packages, uh, but they're staying for pennies on the dollar. And uh, that's, you know, it's just the way of college football. And everybody cringes when the head coach talks about it. But somebody's got to tell y'all, if not, we'll have a whole new roster next year, which that's what it is. That's what we'll do. But I know this city, it won't happen. We'll find a way to get it done. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it.